another Sunday morning the Lord had blessed us with so we can rejoice and be glad in him give him the praise and the glory for this blessed Sunday that we have where we can rejoice in his presence where we can give him praise and glory and honor and thanks for all of the things he have done for us and the way he have kept us through this week for his blessings that he have restored upon us and how he had put a fence around us. We thank God for edging us in because we are no exception to the present crisis that is existing. But because of God's grace and mercy, he pleased himself to protect us thus far. And I believe he will continue to protect us as long as we keep our faith in him. So it's a good thing to give God praise. It's a good thing to give him glory. It's a good thing to give him thanks. It's a good thing to glorify his name. So I would like you to be encouraged in spite of it all. Keep trusting the Lord. Keep depending on him. And he is going to see you through. He's going to work things out for you in spite of how it looked. Continue to trust him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and the thanks for another Sunday morning where we can come into your presence, where we can glorify and magnify your holy name. We do understand it's not because of our good works. We understand, Father, it's not because we are good, but because of your works, because of you are good. The fact is that we can depend upon you. And because the word of God declared that we can do anything and everything through you who have strengthened us. So we thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Which you have come and abide with us, which is you yourself. So we thank you. We praise and we glorify your name. Today is a good day and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it because you are giving it unto us and so we will rejoice in it. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done. We thank you for bringing peace in our land. We thank you for bringing healing. We thank you for bringing deliverance and satisfaction. We thank you, Lord God, because we can rest in you. Amen. Our hearts can rest in you because of your goodness and your mercy and the hope that you have given us because you told us in your word that when we seek you hallelujah in the time of tribulation you will not allow us to be destroyed and so we give you all the praise and the glory for this we thank you because you have aided here eyes that sees hand that handle feet that walk and mouth that talk and nose that smell you are the god hallelujah who have been touched with the feelings of our infirmities you are the god who know what it means to walk the earth among sinners hallelujah and be despised but we thank you for your protection we thank you because you're good to us hallelujah you're so be you've been so good to us our tongue can't find enough words just to say thank you lord thank you for all your goodness and your mercies hallelujah that you have shown on to us when we were down you pick us up when we were out you brought us in when we was a nobody you make us somebody hallelujah you you help us to understand that we are of a royal priesthood we belong to you our glory be to god my soul rejoiced this morning just to think lord god where you took us from just to think where we were and how you reached down your hand and pick us up we just want to say thank you lord our hope is in you one right to say and christ the solid rock i stand all the ground of sinking sand. My hope is built in nothing else but Jesus' blood, hallelujah, and his righteousness. We are so satisfied with you, Lord. Our hearts are so blessed, oh, glory be to God. Not because of our own, uh, because we are sufficient in ourselves, uh, because we have accomplished anything by ourselves, but because of your loving kindness, hallelujah, and your grace that you have extended towards us. Oh, bless your name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks. Oh, you've been so wonderful. You are a wonderful Jesus. And we thank you. We praise thee. Ah, bless the Lord. Somebody need healing today, Lord. So we thank you for healing. Somebody need deliverance. So we thank you for deliverance. Somebody need to be saved. So we thank you for saving. Somebody need comfort. So we thank you for comfort.
comforting. Hallelujah. Somebody, Lord God, is weeping right now. Oh, Lord, they have no hope. They don't know who to turn to. Help them to turn to you, Lord. Help them to reckon that you, hallelujah, stay on your throne and you will not forsake your own. What you have done for others, you will do for us. We thank you this morning. We praise your name. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory and praises and honor be to your name. We give you all the glory, Father. We give you all the praise. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. My soul shall make a boast in you, Lord. You've been so good. Hallelujah. There is no other person, hallelujah, we can trust, but hallelujah, like you, for there is no other one like unto you. And we give you all the glory this morning. We give you all the praises today. Today we rejoice and we're glad because we're saved and we know that we are. Hallelujah. You came down. Hallelujah. And you took us out of darkness. You translated us and we said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. And Father, you told us when we pray, we must say, oh, Father, what in heaven, how well be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We thank God, we give God praise, we give him glory, we give him honor, we give him thanks, we get him so good to us. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. I, I tell you, I feel so happy with the Lord Jesus. I, I, I just give God praise. I was just thinking how good he is, how, how his mercy endured forever. And yesterday, grace is not in, good enough for today. Yesterday, mercy is not good enough today. This morning, he gave me fresh grace. He gave me fresh mercy. He said, hallelujah. I'm so blessed of God. I, I rejoice in him because I know the God that I serve. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even ask. I think above all that I could imagine. Oh, bless the Lord. And, and he said that if I, if I seek him, he will reveal his secret to me. Isn't that something? That's so, that's so good. I want to encourage you this morning. It didn't make a difference what you're going through. Listen to me. God has not forgotten you. It didn't make a difference how it seems. God has not forget, forgotten you. you. You will never be forgotten of God. God wants you to be encouraged. God wants you to be steadfast. God wants you to place your confidence in him. Hallelujah. And don't cast it away because you have great reward of recompense. God will recompense you for your faithfulness. You continue to hold on to God. Yes, you, it seems as though you, 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 your storm will never end. Yes, it seems as though everything is just going out of work and, and things don't seem to be getting any better yeah but listen god is the one that decided the alternative amen continue to pray you're praying for your loved one maybe a husband maybe a wife maybe a daughter son the children i don't know but you you continue to pray maybe for yourself because you're going through some things that you need deliverance you need god to step in and it seems as if god is so far from you it seems as if god has has just taken a trip hallelujah uh, uh, and the return is indefinite night but i want to let you know that god has not taken a trip he is still there he is there for you and you may go through some things but god going to bring you out you may go through the flood but trust me the flood is not going to drown you you may go through the furnace the the fire will not consume you you may go through the lion's den the lion hallelujah will not devour you you keep trusting god your troubles are going to pass amen your your sorrows might be now but your joy is coming your peace is coming so rest in god let your confidence in god hallelujah get stronger and stronger and stronger say like david when things seems to be going against you say like david why art thou cast down O my soul in other words why am i cast down i'm gonna hope in god i'm gonna lift my eyes up onto the hill from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord oh glory hallelujah you you continue to trust god remember what peter said to the lord peter said lord to whom shall we go you're the bread of life i'm going no way staying with you i'm gonna live staying with you i'm gonna have victory 
with you. Staying with you, I'm going to have peace. Staying with you, the alternative will be heaven, will be my home. You stay with the Lord. Oh, yes, the devil wants you to give up. And, and the devil will tell you, you, do, you don't bother. Can't you see things are not getting better? Look, you lost your job. I told you, things not getting better. Who you think going to take care of you now? You trust God. God is going to provide for you. Isn't that what the Lord Jesus said before he left? He said, consider the lily of the, the, the valley. Consider the lily. The, the, uh, the, the grass of the field. Consider the sparrow. Doesn't the Heavenly Father take care of them? And you are of more value than them. He said, don't even consider or think what you're going to eat or, or wear because God is going to provide for you. He said, seek him first and his righteousness. Seek his kingdom. Put him first in all things and watch God provide. Watch God break, break down all the barriers and Take them out of the way and make it so that you can rejoice in him. Make it so that you can rest in him. Make it so that you can have peace of mind because the devil wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your joy. He wants you to always be in torment. But consider God has not given you spirit of fear. Consider that God has not given you the spirit of torment. That's what exactly it means. But he gave you a spirit of peace and joy and happiness. Amen. Bless God. I'm so glad I can rejoice in God. And I want you to rejoice in him too. In spite of all that going on, listen, when we pray, we say, thy will be done. Hallelujah. And earth as it is in heaven. So what is God's will is in heaven? God, that's the thing. I know God's will in heaven for me to be prosperous. God's will for heaven is for me to be above. God's will in heaven is for me not to be the tail. God's will in heaven for me is that I will receive that which he had prepared for me. And since that is his will, then I'm going to get it while I am on this earth. Nothing is going to stop it. So I'm going to remain faithful to him. I'm going to continue to trust him. I'm going to continue to depend on him. I'm going to continue, even though the prayer don't seem to be answered. Listen, even though the prayer, hallelujah, that I prayed this this morning it seems to hit the ceiling I know I was sincere and because of my sincerity it gonna be answered oh bless God so don't let your faith waver don't don't be double-minded you believe God trust him watch him provide so the devil wants you to give up the devil wants you to believe that all is lost and there is no hope you will never ever get over but you continue to trust god my friend you continue to put your confidence in god hallelujah and don't watch nobody don't watch what somebody has. Don't watch how they prospering. That's what happened to David once. He said, when I considered, amen. He said, when I looked at them, it looked like they had no trouble. It looked like everything was going well with them. It looked like things are so so good with them. Oh, bless the Lord. They had no problem. They had nothing at all to worry about. But he said, when I considered, when I considered their ways, oh, bless God. Take a, a thing and consider. Take consider their ways you say you know what i said no 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 they should soon be cut down prosperity of the wicked is a temporal thing trust you me it, 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 it just go as it come ah uh, bless the lord but when God bless you and you become prosperous, nothing steal that joy, nothing steal that peace, nothing steal what God blessed you with. You hold on to God. You hold on. I'm going through. Listen, Pastor, you don't know the troubles I have. My, my body is in a wreck. My body, the doctor said this is wrong and the doctor said that is wrong. And, and so you, you're frustrated and make matters worse. But you trust God. God is still a healer. God is still the God that heal. He say, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. There's still a bomb in Gillian that heal the sin sick soul. My God, you continue to trust him. You continue to depend on him. In spite of what the doctor say, he going to see you through. He going to bring you out. Amen. In spite of the, the corona we, we are facing, we in a, a crisis right now that we can't deny. The evidence is clear. Every turn you turn, the evidence is clear. And so we we Consider this. But who is keeping us in this crisis? God. Who is protecting us? God. Should I be grateful to him for it? Yes. 
Give God the praise. Every day, every moment, every hour, give God the praise. Thank him for all that he's been doing for you. And guess what I found out? I found out that when you seek God, God becomes happy. Oh, hallelujah. You, you continue to seek God. I will seek him this morning. I will seek him th this evening to midday. I will seek him this evening. I will seek God for the rest of my life. I will never, ever get enough of God. God, I want more of you. God, I want you to pour more of yourself in me. I want to be made conformable unto you image unto your likeness. I want to know the power of your resurrection. I want to be in your likeness. So I'm going to set my heart to seek up to you, God. God, you know I love you. God, you know I love you. I depend upon you, God. Whatever God is going to do, and I'm going through it, I know that you is with me, and you're going to bring me out, because you said I shall not perish. You said the hallelujah, that when I seek you in time of tribulation, I will not be destroyed. You will not destroy destroy me. I thank you today. I praise your name today. Whether or not you sleep in my ship, I want you on my ship. Amen. Because I know that once you are on board of my ship, I cannot sink. My ship cannot sink. I cannot go under. My God, I thank you today. I'm going to lift up Jesus. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to exalt him. You lift him up right where you are right now. You can start lifting up the Lord. You can start glorifying him. You can clap your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify you. Today is a good day in my life. Hallelujah. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. And I'm going to live it as if it's the last day of my life. I give you the praise, God. I give you the glory. I'm going to glorify your name because you're God. Hallelujah. And because of you, God, I say thanks. Hallelujah. Because of you. I am who I am. Amen, amen, amen. I'm a child of God. Amen. I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. I've been purchased. Hallelujah. I belong to him. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. My life is now in his hands. It's not mine. Oh, bless God. I'm so grateful to him. I want you to be encouraged today. I want you to strengthen your heart today. You may not have food. You, you, you may not have a job. You may not have money for your mortgage or your house rent. You, 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 you don't know who to turn to. You may have bad credit. You don't know what you will do. But listen, God that we serve is able to do anything. God is able to bring you out of debt. God is able to do that if you trust him. Remember what he said to Amos? Through Amos he said, the silver and the gold are mine. If I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Hallelujah. He said, they're mine. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, seek, seek him first. And all other things going to be added to you. All that you need going to be added to you. He can bring you out of a financial situation. Amen. Amen. He can bring you out. You, you're scratching your head and you're wondering what next. And there you are scratching, scratching, scratching. Stop scratching your head. Stop. Sit down and just consider for a while that all that came to God, God bless them. What do you think God won't bless you? All that depend on God, God bless them. David said he provide for me a table in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. He, he provide for me. Hallelujah. He make a way for me. Hallelujah. He said, though I walk through the bodies of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil for the Lord is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'm telling you, when you trust God, when you depend on God, when you say, God, your will be done, God will open doors that, that you won't even, wasn't even thinking will open. Your blessing will come from the north, the west, the south. You, they will come. They will come. They, God is going to just pour blessing on you. God, God will speak to somebody, and that person will obey God, and they will bless you, and you will say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. So if you hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. Don't give up. I'm going to press my way through. I'm going to press it through. Yes, I'm going to do everything I can for Jesus. I'm going to do everything I possibly can for Jesus. I'm going to live the rest of my life for him. And today might be my last day. I will live it. 
as does my last day. Hallelujah. Because I'm afraid and I fear God. I will not do wrong. I will not do wrong. I will not do wrong. I'm going to hold on to him in spite of how it looks. I'm going to trust him. Oh, bless his name. And he's going to bring me through. He will see me through. He will see me through. Ah, bless God. So you don't have to fear. You don't have to fear. All you have to do is trust God. You don't have to worry. Some of us are, who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we're afraid. Don't be afraid. Trust you me. We are afraid. Oh, we're not denying reality. We're not denying that the, 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 the crisis exists. Amen. The viruses exist. No respect of person. We're not denying that. We are confident in God. That's why we are not faithful. Amen. If God wants to use that virus to, to take us home, he can. Amen. Amen. That's what he would do. So it don't make sense. You worry. It don't make sense you fret. Oh, I'm not saying don't take precaution. I'm saying, yes, obey the rules of the law. Obey the rules of the land, but leave the rest to God. Okay, God, I surrender to you. I give you all. You know it all. You understand it all. So why would I be worried? And plus, you can't do anything about the situation. So worrying is not going to help you. God's going to make you sick. Make you get frustrated. And frustration, frustration brings, is like a cancer stress. It will eat you out and, and you'll soon pine away and die. And the doctor can't find out what's wrong with you. You go to this one, that one, and they can't find out because you have a mental hallelujah, disability uh, that, that, that is not synchronizing with God and God can't concentrate in, in your mind because you're so taken up with what may happen. I'm saying to you, leave what may happen to God. You don't worry. Trust God. Believe God. Hold to God. And God going to see you through. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Oh, Lord. David said, I bless the Lord at all times. His prayer shall continue to be in my mouth. Amen. Let your heart be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Focusing on Jesus and not on your surrounding. Amen. Amen. And God will see you through. God will bless you. God is going to take you through. I love the Lord. Ah, God, glory. Hallelujah. Ah, blessed be the name. Glory and praises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. He's so wonderful. One writer said, what a wonderful Savior. He, he said, a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. My God, I give God praise for such a God. I love him. 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 God knows I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him with all my, my mind and my soul. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And you trust God. And, and today you could rejoice. Be, be. Hallelujah. And the hallelujah side. Shout. Shout for praises. Shout his praises. David said, I, I will praise him. I will exalt him in the midst of the multitude. Hallelujah. So I want to give God praise every day of my life. I want to thank him because he's good to me. Ah, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. A wonderful Savior, wonderful Jesus. I'm so glad that I have a wonderful Jesus. Ah, one that can do exploit. One that can do. Hallelujah. What? No other person can do. I don't care who you are. You can't do what Jesus have done and what he is doing. So my dear brother and sisters, uh, 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 rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Listen, we could have been dead. Isn't that true? But did God please himself to keep us alive. And you know why he pleased himself to keep us alive? So we can praise his holy name. So we can glorify his holy name. So we can exalt him and lift him up on high. And say, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Blessed be called the Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. I just give God praise. I give him glory. I give him honor. And I give him thanks for his goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I have a few minutes that I want to share with you because I'm trying to cut down on time. And if I have to do 
take again and go and preach from where I left off, I will do so. But I have some things I want to share with you today. Amen. I don't even know how to start because my soul is so blessed. The thing is so sweet in me. I feel like just like a fire in my bones. It just shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. They, your glory be the God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. My soul praise you, God. My soul magnify you. My soul exalt you because you're worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your grace and your mercies, they brought us through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we, we talk about Matthew and we are continuing with Matthew today. We want to begin chapter 3. And we want to talk about some things that God has put in our spirits. Amen. Hallelujah. And Matthew chapter 3 started like, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness. He's preaching and he is doing this without a formal introduction. He is preaching in Judea here he comes so I want you to notice that Matthew did not give a formal introduction of John. He said, in those days, in the days when Herod was slaughtering the innocent children, when Rachel were wailing and weeping, and the other women for their children, In those days, when the hope has gone, when Herod had no kind of a feelings for the weeping mothers and the children that he was slaughtering, they came John. And by the way, he was nicknamed Baptist. Came on the scene. And he began preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And you saying, repent. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want you to notice how he starts his message. He starts his message on repentance. So we understand that the people he was talking to were the people that knew right from wrong. So he's preached repentance. And you're saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We do understand also 
that he preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand and the Lord Jesus appeared. So it would seem that he was referring to the Lord Jesus as the kingdom of heaven. Now we were taught that the kingdom of heaven is the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus. That is a theological concept or perspective. That's the way the theologian look at it. But from the scripture, which is the Bible itself, when he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, we notice that the Lord Jesus appeared. The interesting thing is the Lord Jesus preached the same thing that John preached. And Jesus had a way of preaching himself projectively. Let me say that again. Jesus had a way of preaching himself projectively. So he projected himself and yet he's preaching about himself and the concept is for us to understand what he was preaching. Take for example, when he got baptized by John, which you would see later on, a voice spoke from heaven and the spirit descended like a dove. And we understand that. So that would appear as though there was another God that was speaking. For this is my beloved son. Amen. That's what it said, right? So it would appear as though there was another person speaking. But when we read John chapter 3 and verse 13, and we notice something Jesus said, no man ascend to heaven, but he that came from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So I want you to notice the past and the present there. So we do understand that Jesus was on earth and yet in heaven. To be more dogmatic about the whole thing, he was in the woman's womb, and yet he controlled the entire world. Yet he had perfect knowledge of all that was conspiring in both heaven, land, and sea. There were no two ways about that. He never lost consciousness. And so we begin to see another side of it, which we're going to get into as we go along. Now, I want you to notice that John went on to say, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye, the way of the Lord. So, taking this into consideration is a prophetic statement that was made concerning the one that was going to come to be the herald of the Lord Jesus. Yet, Matthew have not given any account. From the scripture, and from our understanding, which of course was revealed to the Lord, to us through the Lord, Matthew 
had no need to give an account of who John was, where he came from, because he was presenting the gospel to a people that knew the prophetic. So there was no need. He said it clearly. This is he that was spoken about. This is a voice of one that was prophetically mentioned. He's coming and he is saying, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Then we notice something else about John. He was not a socialist. He did not intermix with the crowd. He lived in the wilderness and there was something strange about him his clothing was strange. His raiment, if you might say it that way, was strange. And his meat was strange. He wore camel's hair for his clothing. That was strange. A Latin girdle was about his lines. And his meat while was locust and wild honey. But the thing about it, we're going to notice something. In spite of the fact that Matthew was very abrupt in switching. And we would see that. As we go on. So this John, who was nicknamed the Baptist, it is said that he went, they went out to him as he was preaching and baptizing Jerusalem, Judea, and all the region round about Jordan. So he had a message considering that his appearance came in in the time that is called the intertestamental period. So the 400 years of silence is now broken. It stopped. Some are wrong BC4, some are wrong there just before Christ came in. John came on the scene. And so he was preaching. The scripture has not gave us a detail of his messages. But one thing we do know, that his messages were very attractive. Whether the people came because they were curious, because they want to hear, because they haven't heard any message from God, there were no messengers from God. All they were doing is just the old rituals. But they came. And the scripture has employed that when John said repent, that they repented 
and they got baptized. You know, some people say, oh, I'm saved, but I don't, I don't have to be baptized. You better go see the altar again. Amen. Listen to me. Don't make people fool you. That you don't have to get baptized. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and make him your Lord, Jesus said, he called me Master and Lord, and so I am. If I then your Master and your Lord have done it, you ought to do it. In other words, you do what I did. Amen. And some people refer to the thief on the cross of Calvary. He was dying and he said, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. I said, oh, well, the thief didn't baptize. And that's what you may think. All the thief was saying, when you use that word, remember, Lord, make me whole again. Put me back together. But the same way the people of the anti-delusion world had to hear the gospel preached and had to accept and whether you accept this or not had to be baptized so everyone else had to and paul went as far as to say to the corinthians that the forefathers were baptized under the rock that followed them and that rock was jesus so john preaching whatever John preached, the people repented. This brings a question to our minds today. As pastors, as bishop and as so-called bishop and apostles, so-called apostles and ministers, your message that you preach, does it bring repentance to the heart of the people? The message that you deliver. You deliver a message just to be what you call the happy message. Make people happy. Make them feel good. Make them feel as though all is well. Or you preach repentance, heaven or hell. Grace or judgment. That's what you should preach. Tell it as it is. God don't need no help. Because when you begin to compromise on the word, you're going to pay for it. For whatsoever a man sweat. God is no respected person. So don't think because you occupy an office, you can preach any and anything. Amen. And the people live in sin. And you will get away with it. That will not happen. So we notice that the message that John preached caused people to repent. Amen. Not, not just a few people. It said Jerusalem went out. Judea went out. And all the region rung and about Jordan. All went to his services and were baptized. So John made it very clear. You got to live right. I don't know how far we will get, but God, God will bless us with whatever we get. Notice the scripture made it clear. They were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Acknowledging 
that they were needed a savior. Acknowledging that they were not right. Today in our churches, yeah, I'm talking about our churches. People come into the church, they sit under our messages, just coming out from a, a bed of fornication or adultery, just finish telling a lie, just finish fighting with the wife or the husband, just finish doing the devil's work and walk in the church and leave worse than they came. Because there was no conviction. Because the preachers don't hear from God anymore. And I say that widely. You say, well, you're making a general statement. Well, in every general statement, there's always an exception. As it's saying, there's an exception to every rule. There's an exception. Maybe there's an exception. You might be the exception. I know I am. But notice the Jerusalem, Judea, and the region around Jordan, all of them went baptized of John, confessing the sins. So John didn't baptize nobody except they confessed and acknowledged that they needed a savior. They preached. They made it clear. They heard the preached in word, or the, the spoken word, and that they had to be saved so they confess. This is the real. It was clear to them. Those are the kind of preachers we need today, preachers like John the Baptist. I'll point something out. If we don't get to it today, don't worry. We will get to it. If we as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ can only preach the Bible, the word of God, the rima, let God use his word. You know, Jesus said, Jesus said, ye are sanctified through the words that I speak. Faith, said Paul, Come by hearing, and that's hearing the word. You're clean through the word. But today, we have all this fancy preaching, all this bad noise. It seems to me we are using all these things as a scapegoat to get away. It seems to me that we, we forget the power of God and that God's power must function in the church. And when we stand behind the sacred desk to deliver the word of God, first of all, we must be clean. Clean vessel and the word will go forth with the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, our, our, our gospel came not with enticing words of man's wisdom. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves to have people rejoicing in our churches today and yet going to hell. We want to keep the numbers? You afraid that somebody would leave? Jesus said something. My sheep hear my voice and the voice of strangers they won't hear. They know my voice. 
So if they're saved, trust me, they ain't going away. So they went confessing their sins. Hallelujah. And while he was there preaching, baptizing, doing the work of God, the scripture declare that Pharisees and Sadducees came to his baptism. They came to get baptized. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Baptizer. How many hypocrites have you baptized? How many times you took a hypocrite and baptized them? Because they came under deception. And so you were deceived. And the reason why the spread of discernment or the office of the spread of discernment not only was in you, but was in the church. Notice they came, they want to be baptized. But they didn't repent. They did not turn from their wicked ways. Don't forget that the word Pharisee have two definitions. One is a learned person, one that is learned in the law, very intelligent. They were very much on the intellectual side. They knew the law. They studied it. They learned it. So they were well learned. The other is they were hypocrites. So there you have it. A well learned hypocrite. Whether we believe it or not, I said this before. We, the pastors and ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, is responsible for the state the church is in. And the church is responsible for the state the world is in. We are. Let's get our acts together. So when these intellectual illiterates, when it comes to God, they're not but illiterates. When it comes to secular education, oh yes, they're so intellectual. Comes in with the hypocritical self, being an undercover hypocrite. They will be detected. But we can't even go and say, Satan, I recognize you. In fact, when they come in, they shall be so un at ease because the presence of God here that they shall recognize the presence of God and cry out for deliverance. You know why we are in the mess we are? You know why? Within Christendom today, they have grabbed the hearts of the people. You know why? Because our confidence in God, if it was there, had been weakened. Some of us don't know how to trust God. 
So they came. They came to his baptism. And as I ask you, how many times haven't you baptized a hypocrite? One that have malice in the heart, hatred, and forgiveness. But they make a good impression and you are deceived by the impression that was made. Jesus said something before he left. He said, I tell you nay, except he repent, he shall all likewise perish. No excuse. So notice this. They came. But John is going to make a shift. John is going to be abrupt. John decided, I am going to stop preach. I'm going to stop this baptismal service because some folks say it ain't right. I am not concerned about the number who get baptized. I am concerned about a heart condition. I'm concerned about a relationship with God. I'm concerned that people come to a place to have a good relationship with God. So he stopped. I can't preach under the circumstances. I can't baptize anymore because I detect some people who have not repented. He looked at them. He stopped and he said unto them, O oh generation, Watch the word, generation. A generation is not just one people. A generation is not just an individual. A generation is a whole nation. Every single person that was born within that period of time, this every person, regards to where they live in the world, every single person at the same age is a generation. And he looked at them. And he said these words, you generation of vipers. Generation of snakes, poisonous snake. Who had warned you to flee from the rot to come. Who warned you to flee? And that's the question that we must answer because it is our responsibility to warn Peep.
people to flee from the wrath to come because the wrath is coming. It's coming. Brothers and sisters, are you warning others about the wrath to come? Watch this. He said, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. In other words, let me see some evidence. Let me see the change life. Let me see that you change. Let me see the fruit that you're bearing. Now, if you want to know the fruit, we will continue with this next week. Yes, we're going to stop right here. And we will prepare ourselves. To produce fruit. Fruit that proves that we have repented and we are children of God, walking before God in sincerity. We will go into that. And I pray God should spare our life to see the coming week. We will talk about this. Let me close by asking you the question. What kind of fruit are you bearing? Are you bearing fruit or you just have the works of the flesh? We'll talk about that next week, God's will. My friend, if you have not yet given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, Judgment is sure to be. Hell is just as real as heaven. And just as how you know who you are and what you have done and what you are doing, God knows for sure what you're going to be. And he's saying to you, repent, repent, turn from your wicked ways and seek the Lord. You will be found of you. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Accept him as your savior and make him your Lord. And you will live. Forever. Those of you who are saved, be encouraged. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Practice nothing else but holiness, righteousness, purity, and God will bless you. Don't be a Sadducee. Don't be a Pharisee. You say you love God, then live for God. Then trust God. Walk with God. Talk God. Let everybody see God in you. Let everybody know that God, hallelujah, is in you and you are with God. Amen. Before I pray, let me remind you, this is Pastor John, the pastor of the St. John Westland Methodist Church located at 1053 Rockland Road, Brooklyn, New York, 11212. We are happy to present to you today the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because we believe that he's coming again and we must preach the unadulterated word. His word is infallible and we must preach it as it is. We don't, we don't sugarcoat, we don't pat a cake, nothing. 
we believe that the word must be preached as the word. Amen. So may God bless you. We ask that you continue to pray for us, pray for yourself, pray for our country, pray for our world. And let God use you. Amen. Let us pray. If Father, an eternal God, you who have taken us out of darkness and bring us to your marvelous light and give us the privilege to rejoice in you, I pray, God, that you will bless those who have listened to the word today, that you continue, God, to strengthen them and keep them according to your will. Protect them continually, Lord, and help them to keep their trust and their faith in you, knowing that you would see them through. Provide continually for them. Let none of your children beg. Let none of your children be in want of anything. Provide for them. I thank you for doing so now, Lord. I give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and the thanks. We pray again for our country, our government. We pray that again we ask that you bring peace in our land and healing and around the world. We pray for those who are traveling from land to land, that you protect them and keep them according to your will. We thank you for doing this. So we give you all the praise, the glory, the honor, and the thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We also ask that your grace would rest upon us and to remain upon us. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your will be done. Amen. My friends, we covet your prayer. Come next Sunday evening. We are going to be out in the streets, right in front of the church. We're going to be proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, so we covet your prayer. So I pray that you will have a pleasant, pleasant afternoon. Amen. Look forward to see you Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock as we continue with our Bible study. We're dealing with the book of Ephesians. So have thine own way. God bless you. Amen.